Has Mesopotamia got the Egyptian blues? Let's find out. I'm Brad Hafford, archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania and field director right here at the ancient city of Ur, Tel Mokayar, in southern Iraq. Penn has a long history at this site, having sponsored jointly with the British Museum excavations from 1922 until 1934 that were led by Sir Leonard Woolley. Now, after Woolley left, there wasn't a whole lot of excavation here. And then, finally, in 2015, SUNY Stony Brook came back, and I was one of the excavators at that time, in 2017 and in 2019. At that point, the permit shifted over back to the University of Pennsylvania, and we were planning to come out in 2020, but, of course, COVID. Finally, here in 2022, we are back for the first fully penned season. Now, having left the trenches for three years, they start to wash down. And although we can backfill a certain amount in this deep trench, we wanted to keep going down a bit lower. So the first thing we had to do was clean off the material that had washed in. This object that I want to talk about today was found in that cleaning. It is a small bead that is light blue in color. And many people would call this material Egyptian blue. Hence my question about Egyptian blues. Well, it was found right here in the section wall. As we were cleaning away the washed material, I looked up and saw a light blue object right here. So it's not from as deep as we are right now, but it's a pretty well dated context. It's sitting just beneath floor levels. You can see lines here. There's a latest floor, a middle floor, and a lowest floor. So it was sitting on the floor of a building that we had investigated, but hadn't quite gone that far in to find this bead. That building dates to the early Isin period, somewhere around 1950 BCE. The material below it contained Ur three tablets, as well as some early Isin tablets. That's how we can date the building above it, because of the material that it's sitting on. Now most of this material is packing in order to level the ground and make sure that they had something to build on. And it should be Ur 3, 2100 to 2000 BCE. What is it? Well, most people actually use the word faience for it. But faience, true faience, was invented about 500 years ago. And that is an earthenware with a tin glaze on it. Now this really isn't either of those things. It's a self-glazing material that looks a bit like more modern faience, but I think we should call it frit, and many people do. It's a bit more neutral term. What is it? Well, it's a mixture of lime and silicates and alkaline salts. And it, when fired to about 900 degrees Celsius, is a kind of self-glazing. The salts and the powdered metal that's also in there combine, and they migrate to the surface, and they make this kind of glaze that gives it a color that kind of depends on the material that was added. So a lot of these use copper and they turn a bit light green. This one is a light blue. Later they start using cobalt for a darker blue. And it is very popular in Egypt, particularly in the late Bronze Age, but the technology has been around for about 6,000 years. It's pretty amazing because really what this is, is near glass. When you fire it hot enough, it will actually vitrify, but this hasn't quite done that. It does have tiny particles of a silicate kind of glass inside and quartzite, uh, quartz crystals inside it. We think that when they were grinding limestone to make limestone bowls and things, they used copper tools, and that created, as, an, as a byproduct, this powder that contained both little flecks of the copper tool and the lime from the limestone, and that may be part of what was used to make faience or frit. In fact, we found another piece we thought was Egyptian blue on the surface out where we're setting in new trenches beyond the city wall. It looked very much like the faience frit material with this blue color, 
but it just felt odd and it looked almost like a bracelet or a necklace and it was in pieces and we were able to kind of put it back together. It had a very interesting shape. It didn't quite look like plastic. I worried that it would be because it was on the surface. We puzzled over it for a long time and finally realized that that shape was not a necklace or a bracelet, but rather was the top of a modern flip-flop sandal. So that the piece that came down that looked like what might hang uh, at a neck, that was the, pl the piece that went between the toes. And so what it was was not quite plastic, it was more of a rubber that had been sitting out in the sun for decades probably. And it had turned into this hardened material with that blue color and it, we were almost fooled by a flip-flop. But in this case, we definitely have a well-dated piece of faience. It's an interesting, complicated material. It's fascinating that they discovered this. They were, of course, firing a lot of clay. And why not experiment with other materials? And then they found out that this would make great jewelry. And that's mostly what it's used for, little figurines perhaps. But usually here in Mesopotamia, we find that it's used to make beads. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this frit bead with me. and thinking about ancient jewelry and decoration and technology. And I hope you'll join me again on the next Ancient Artifacts for Artifactually Speaking.